Alrighty, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, and welcome back everybody to a little bit more Final Fantasy X post-game. Now, I think today is going to be the last day of post-game, whether I managed to defeat Penance or not. I've actually been very close yes oh, last time, actually this is yesterday, already I was like, yeah I'm okay with just leaving it here, but at the same time, I am kind of curious what happens if you do beat the thing, so let's just make a compromise. If I don't beat it today, that's gonna be okay. Because I did enjoy the remainder of the game quite a bit. Even though I think the post game here is just, well, not the type of challenge that I'm usually looking for, but it was definitely quite the experience. Now, as I have promised, I did actually end up grinding up some things. So, we now should have a bunch of luck spheres available. Let's see how that's going to go. Welcome to you as well, I'm Maddie. Hope you're doing well. Let's see. So Lulu has by far the least amount of luck, so this is kind of the character that I needed to um, aim for. But at this point we have, as a matter of fact, 15 luck spheres, which are things to put down to make luck notes, and fortune spheres to use those luck notes to begin with. Now, I actually have to go somewhere in order to start using those, and I'm actually not entirely sure where to go with that. I guess there's three notes right here, and then a few more up there that we can go to. I haven't exactly planned this part out. <laughs> So in case you're curious, by the way, um, the the way I ended up defeating the Earth Eater quite decently efficiently, actually both the Earth Eater as well as the Big Sphere thingy, what I did is I actually ended up using an ability that I haven't used before, like almost whatsoever. There is that Prey ability right here. And Kimari happened to have that. He heals for about a thousand with the prey ability to the entire group. And it is just enough, as long as I shell and protect up the party, to just heal through the counterattacks of both the Earth Eater and the Sphere. So I was able to just basically tap the confirm button. Kimari was using prey to heal the party, and Lulu and Titus were just attacking the physical attacks. And that worked out for the most part quite well. Alrighty, Fortune Spheres. Each one of these sphere uh, thingies gives us 4 luck. And I was told that my goal is to get to 85 luck here. So, uh, we just kind of need to move a bit further and set in more spheres. What does luck do? So what luck does is actually a variety of things. Among other things, it increases your critical hit rate, but also your dodge chance as well as your chance to hit against enemies that have luck themselves. So effectively, the way I understand it, I need to have a sufficient amount of luck in order to cancel out the enemy's luck, so even though I have maxed out accuracy with 255, right now it is not guaranteed that I will be able to hit the enemy in any capacity if they have too much luck. Like, the luck stat will just allow them to dodge my attacks um, frequently, at occasion, especially the current boss that I'm facing. Apparently with 85 luck I will be able to effectively overcome that predicament. What luck is this one? I actually did calculate in some notes that already pre-exist in the grid that already do include uh, some luck notes. But yeah, uh, that's kind of what luck does. You can max out the luck stat and it can help you just kind of breeze through even the super bosses from what I can tell. But at the same time, for me, I'm just looking to see that I can make my... Oops. 
movements and attacks reasonably reliable, and then I can strategize around actually being able to hit stuff, basically. That was my goal, at least. I have not maxed out the strength because I hope it's not going to be necessary. Alright, we need... Oh my goodness, I keep accidentally cancelling out. We need just a little bit more luck here. On Lulu. Five nodes to be exact. These are two, now three more. We have one more to put down. And I'm gonna put it down uh, right here. And then Lulu actually has to travel to the top right of the board where I put down a bunch of Lux spheres earlier in the game in my playthrough. So she needs two more in order to reach 85. So let's see, where was that? Over here is one. Then there's one more to the top left over there. I think you can have zero accuracy and 255 luck and you will never miss an attack. Yes. And that's also kind of where I was hoping. Futile hoping. But I was hoping that it would also kind of work the other way around. That if I have enough accuracy I would be able to cancel out an opponent. Well, luck that with enough accuracy, but that's apparently not how it works. Alright, that's Lulu at 85 ac uh, luck. Which is gonna move Tetris and do the same things. So in case you're curious, the grind didn't take that long, probably. I actually didn't pay attention as to how long it took. I was just tapping the button after setting up each time. And I was watching some things along the way. Yeah, how much more do you need? Because I scheduled it relatively tight, like I can't just waste a little bit more luck on one character. So you need... Five more nodes. One... Two... Three... Two more, right? Yeah, two more. Oh, that's only two lock points. Don't use that one. Alright, in Last Man's Kimari, might actually have a few more than necessary, but that's okay. Two hundred fifty-five accuracy plus aim should be sufficient, or maybe somewhat around eight-ish luck on top. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm getting to eighty-five luck, and I was told that is going to be sufficient. So, like, if I can overcome it with a bit of buffing in combat, I'm quite okay with this. This is why I didn't worry too much about getting my stats raised against Yojimbo, because I was able to just hit him anyways. Even though he did have quite significant... like, Dark Yojimbo had a lot of evasion. But to me, it was still quite interesting, because I was able to just overcome that by solid like move choice so to speak even though it was a bit lengthy alrighty we need four six more it's okay to be a strong stat but it feels like bad design to make other stats pointless there's a few uh, questionable design choices across the board in this game, I feel. But at the same time, in the grand scheme of things, 
I like this game a lot. To me, it's kind of a lot like actually basically any other game really. If you have enough knowledge and you are far enough into a game, that's kind of when you start noticing these little bits and pieces that are like a little bit off in terms of things that you would like to be a little bit different and such. But if you're just casually playing through the game, I think the system is quite enjoyable. In a similar vein, I felt like because I already knew the system really well in the Final Fantasy V ROM hack, so to speak, I thought it was actually quite a fascinating way to play through the remix ROM hack because I was already very intricately familiar with the mechanics and system and I was able to just kind of play around with it. But it's a similar case where I would not necessarily recommend that ROM hack to... Um, well... Most people other than... Well, I just liked it, but I don't know that you will like it. Alrighty, I also did actually put down some notes as to what I want to do with the equipment. So, I don't exactly know where we got the Genji shield from, but Titus also has break HP limit and auto phoenix, so I think as long as I just put auto haste on it, and I did actually purchase some more Trocobo wings while offline, uh, we should be able to use this to our advantage. So with this, Titus should have enough maximum HP to guarantee surviving um, the attacks by, well, the Oblivion thing. And my hope is Kimari with Tiefens plus 20% will be able to survive it as well. Now, Titus does not have a ribbon on this. I don't know whether that ends up being a problem in the long run, but we'll see. Alright, and this is basically my entire setup, I suppose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and give everybody first strike weapons or something like that. The reason what I'm gonna do is first strike on Waka. I'm gonna... Do you have first strike? No, you don't. You have first strike on your weapon. Do you have first strike anywhere? Nah. And that's... All the people. Alright, I'm gonna actually briefly customize a weapon of somebody else to have first strike. That way I basically get an entire turn in before uh, the enemy is going to move, because I'm going to effectively use first strike and then move the other characters in afterwards. Like we have first strike on Lulu's weapon, but I don't want to have to replace the weapon, because that feels like it would just remove the utility of first strike to begin with. Alright, uh, who can do I give that to you? Waka has one. Oren has one. Uh, let's give you one. First strike. Oh yeah, I remember now why suddenly I was running out of fortune spheres to put into the luck notes. I literally just realized that I still had some master spheres to use in order to fill in the luck notes, so that's what I also calculated in there. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna use a separate save file just in case I wanna change Titus' Genji shield to have different things on it. Because auto protect would be amazing on it, but I could also just put auto region on it. Actually, there's not much of a reason not to just put auto region on it now, and if it doesn't work out, I'm just gonna load the other save here. The reason why I'm not auto protect on Titus' shield is because I don't have enough light curtains. I don't know where, where you get them, but... Eh, it's fine. Auto region. So it's just gonna continuously heal. And yes, I did beat the Dark Mega Sisters. <laughs> In that case, the Genji shield should be a drop from Cindy, the big one. Oh, do they drop different things when... You div uh, fight them all at the same time. Interesting. That's kind of neat. Alrighty. 
Let's see. Let's see whether Penance is going to be friendly enough this time around. I'm a doofus. I forgot to change people's formations. <laughs> I put first strike on cactus weapons. I neither equipped them nor did I put those cactus into the front row. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Uh. Oh, you don't think it matters if, if all or at once or together. If the little one can drop all of his, for example. Alrighty. Oh well, we already have our team here that I want to have. So, let's see whether we can knock out the hand. So, from what I was told, the hand does have 500,000 HP. I did not ask for the, um, the other arm's HP, but I assume it's the same. And I did not ask how much HP the boss has. But, the big problem I've encountered with this thing in particular, in my last attempts at just kind of trying to figure out the boss fight, is this thing has an ability that hits all the characters for 75% of their maximum HP. And that wouldn't be that big of a deal if it couldn't exactly combine with a ridiculously strong attack right afterwards, where it effectively does not matter how much HP I have. But he can just cast Obliterate right after this, and that's kind of where I'm like, well, I don't see a way to do this outside of either sacrificing Aeons in timely turns, or alternatively... Just knocking this thing out quickly, and I decided that, you know what, I would like to know how much HP it has, and that's kind of where I figured, well, my attacks are just not good enough at the time. So I asked how much luck I would need to guarantee a hit, and 85, apparently it's the number. So that's kind of what I'm gonna do here, so I'm gonna try and hit that arm five times. And since we don't need any setup whatsoever in order to achieve this, I think this is gonna be hopefully fine. Everybody should deal max damage to this arm, because we are ignoring defense, this is attack number three. Attack number four. So, 4 that is not quite enough damage, 5, and one more attack. So this thing has like 5 HP, 4 HP. Either way, we don't need a whole lot more damage. But I'm gonna use this opportunity to just double cast some ultimas for extra damage to everything else too. Hello! Welcome to your methods. So, with this I hope I will be able to progress further into the boss's phase and see what else he may have in store. I hope I didn't miscount. Either way, Kimari is likely to die here, but Titus should survive. And he has all the Phoenix, so... Yeah, Obliteration, Kimari just barely doesn't survive it. Oh, Titus didn't survive it either, but that's less than ideal. <laughs> oh no. You know... I never used the Mega Phoenix anyway, so quick pockets. Mega Phoenix. Why does... Oh, Lulu has auto protect. That's why. I remember. Ah. Uh. So... Pickpockets, Mega Elixir. So the problem is, Titus does not actually have a way to protect against the arm, and he could just get straight up knocked out by the arm and removed from battle. If that happens, we probably just reset here. Calamity. Okay, this inflicts armor break, which means Lulu now has significantly less defenses across the board. So, however. The idea here of mine is to cast Protect on you. You should guaranteed survive the Obliterate next. I have not seen Penance do anything except for our Obliterate. And I think this might be enough for Kimari to survive too. Uh, Lulu will get knocked out here. But again, Titus does have Auto Phoenix, so it should hopefully be fine. Uh, 
All right. Regeneration. Okay, that is the second obliterate. Let me actually start keeping count. He regenerated after the second obliterate hit right there. Because I figure it is kind of on a cycle. So that is when I will need to pay attention to these things. So the plan is of mine. To get set up in a way where I'm not going to be easily killed by Obliterate anymore. And we want to absolutely kill the right arm as quick as we can. That's one. Two. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Let's see. How do I do this? I'm not gonna get a turn or my turns in before the right arm's gonna move. Not enough anyways. I'm gonna get three hits in. So Lulu can die to this next move. Um what's your armor, Kimari? You do have the ribbon, so you're immune to thing. Alright. What are we gonna do, Kimari? So we're gonna sentinel. He should be able to tank what if the right arm decides to physically attack. And I think Titus cannot actually heal up Lulu sufficiently high. He just doesn't have enough, but let's get a quick hit in, that is number three. Okay, uh, number four. Do I get a quick pockets in before? Yes, I suppose. I would like to cheer sometime. But I feel like I'm not currently getting an opportunity. So what I'm gonna do here is I will be double casting Drain on this. This way it's going to be to deal these 5 damage points that we need. And it's also going to heal up Lulu to full in Ultima afterwards. So everybody should survive and obliterate here. My plan will be, once I manage to set it up somehow, to have Lulu just sentinel everybody the entire time. But that could be rather difficult to do. Alright. Let's see. Imari currently does not actually deal enough damage to the arm on the right, I just realized, because he does not have enough HP. Ah, I didn't consider that part. Ah, I didn't consider that part, that's a mistake. Imari literally is not gonna be able to... ...kill it because his weapon damage... Well, actually... No, it might have been fine. Either way, he has enough speed to knock it out. Right here, Calamity. Oh wait, that was more arm one. Alright, fair enough. Okay, okay, okay. Now... This is where we dispel Kimari. And we need to cast Protect on him again. Actually, the arm is going to go, and my plan is for Lulu to play the Sentinel for the other, since she has both the Ribbon as well as Automatic Protect. So even if the uh, thing attacks and removes my buffs, Lulu doesn't have any buffs to be removed, or that can be removed anyways. So we should be fine on this end. 
So put protect back onto Kimari. Very nice. And this is where I want to finally begin using cheer to reduce the incoming physical damage. What is this boss? This is penance. This is basically the super boss from what I can tell. Um here, here. I don't know whether there's like a better description for that. So Lulu should survive an obliterate thanks to being in sentinel mode. Receiving half damage here. And be able to protect against whatever is coming up from the other thing here. Tier 2. Thanks, Lulu. Um, I think I just need to keep you on sentinel mode here. Um, tier 3. Kimara is going to heal again. I probably should have bought some more Mega Elixirs. Uh, do we know what happens if we win? I have no idea, no. I am completely new to this, if you will. So, this is what I'm trying to figure out. Never fought this thing before. I don't exactly know what it can do, but I'm basically trying my best. There we go. Regeneration. So the arms are really fast. So I think my goal is to knock out the arms immediately again. But I do need to heal Lulu. Attack number one. If I don't sentinel, the left arm could physically attack again. But if I don't heal Lulu... Well, this could be really bad. So, we want to get in one more cheer, but we really need to prioritize killing the arm on the right. Mighty guard. Oof. All right. I think we actually still deal full damage or max damage with this thing. Let's see. We do not. We need to dispel. Actually, we might not because we just didn't. Oh, Lulu is not. Okay, I have to send them up here. We actually, this should be fine. Um, Kimari. Well, I hope he doesn't kill. No, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sentinel with Kimari, and then quick pockets. Heal up everybody with Titus. This way we should guarantee the arm not killing anybody. Right, the other arm on the right is going to move soon. I think this is attack number three basically. My plan is to knock it out before it can move. That has the highest priority here. Even though we're gonna basically be vulnerable to the other arm attacking now. And there's the problem. Alright. Reset. Okay. We need to not have that happen. Actually, maybe Ruddy uh, would be more efficient if I were to double Lulu's and Titus's HP. But then again, I got so few turns to set up to begin with. I, I'm just kind of struggling to get established, if you will. 
Add stone proof instead of auto region. Uh, yeah, auto region doesn't feel like it does anything. Did Titus not have protect anymore by chance? Either way, I don't think we need auto region, it doesn't help. We could go stone proof, that definitely is. What? So here's the thing. He only gets pet. Well, actually, he does get petrified if he gets hit, I guess. I suppose the question is how much damage it is. But if we double. Alright, here. Let's do this. Don't proof, I think, is definitely a good suggestion. Let's get Kimari. Break HP limit as well, potentially. So we can break HP limit, stone proof. And auto haste. Which means actually I need to get that again. So the reason why I break HP limit in this case is that way I can double everybody's HP. And everybody is going to have much more leeway to survive whatever the attacks are gonna be. So I can just straight up attack through them is the plan. I don't know whether it's a good plan, but it's the plan. So, yeah. So, I need stone proof on you as well. So I need some more petrified grenades. And I need some more chocobo wings. You're counting. Since he's named Penance, why don't we just apologize? We I don't think they've implemented the speech option in that encounter. They did implement it in other encounters. So probably it's an intentional choice to not just be able to talk. Yes, the arm on the right is the one that uses the tetragraviton, I think it's called. Which... I don't know. I don't like it. <laughs> In fact, what I may want to do, so uh, until now, I've kind of just not cared about increasing Titus's magic power to the max because I was just too lazy. But considering one of my best ways to heal up is going to probably be just to drain the enemies and bosses via double cast, I think... It's finally time to max out Titus's maximum magic power as well, so I'm just gonna do this real quick. Call Thor! Thank you. Hello. Welcome back to you for almost four years now. I'm glad you enjoy your stay. I hope you're doing well. How are you doing, sir? How are you doing? How's it going? I think I needed a bit less than a hundred magic power. I actually don't know where the remaining magic power nodes are, so... Let's see... We have... Actually, it's still missing quite a bit. I think the remaining parts... There they are. Over here. I need to wear some more. You're pretty well. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. For the most part, I think they are doing mostly fine. Some are struggling a bit currently, but I hope that passes. I 
All right, we need 14 more. This is 12. And that should be sufficient to max out Hitters' magic power as well. So many people you know have gotten the runa the last months. You've that's unpleasant. Well, for me, it is one of my siblings, unfortunately, and her family ended up just getting the thing. They are looking mostly fine, but it's not something that seems to go over too fast. Well, they're mostly fine from what I heard last. Oh, yeah. Alright, let's get a Machia anyway in here. I happen to already have memorized the amount of money that I need to spend for this guy because I've done this enough now. Thanks, buddy. I need 63. Please give me a 63. Oh, that's... <laughs> that's actually the lowest amount I've received so far. Oh well. So, I don't know what the probability is of this, but... Good a thousand. Last time it works, worked decently well. That one didn't want to take the money from Tedus, but from Lulu, I suppose that's fine. All right. And with this, we should be able to customize Kimari's equipment. Order haste. I mean, the goal is going to be in the end that we don't have to worry about things anymore. But until we get to that point, that's kind of the difficult part. Um, right, stoneproof. Actually, I haven't written or memorized that one. Uh, petrify grenades from a lot of enemies, apparently. Basilisk is the best one. There's a basilisk. There it is. Hello, I'd like to purchase some grenades. How much do we need? Buy... 51,000 is fine. Technically only needed 50,625, but I'm lazy to input things. Twenty-seven. How many petrify grenades do I need, anyways, for stone proof? Stone proof. I need twenty, apparently. So we have enough now. Thanks, sir. Hopefully, this is the last time we have to talk this playthrough. <laughs> stone proof. All right, theoretically, this might be fine. I'm gonna once again use a separate save file here. Just in case I mess up or messed up something. At this point, I kinda lost track of which save file is which anyways, so maybe it doesn't matter. <laughs> now, equip Tedos, you get the uh, Legendary weapons, all three of you do have that. Now we get Yuna, Oren, and Waka in here. All of you should have equipped weapons with first strike. Oh, you don't have first strike weapon equipped yet. There it is. And that's my setup. I'm gonna save again just in case I. 
forget to switch out Here the tools count. again. Alright, the attempt number... Seven, eight, something along these lines. Now, up until now, I didn't really feel like I had much of a choice or chance to be able to win. Right now, I think as long as the first few rounds work out, we might have a decent shot at it. Thank you for the good luck, I will need it. Thank you for the good luck. Alright. Let's get things started. Quick hit. Left arm. Everybody here has first strike, so they get effectively an in initial turn. And if I just exchange them, it kind of, from what I can tell, transfers the first strike turn to the other characters too. Now, what I would like to have is Kimari. With full... <laughs> so, optimally, Kimari would have his overdrive full, so I could just use uh, the Ronzo thing, but kind of messed up. Either way, um, we're going to go ahead and double cast Ultima, just to deal a bit of damage to everything. And hey, Booncurse, good day to you. And welcome. And yeah, emphasis on trying to defeat this thing. Alright, this should knock out the arm on the right side. Of our right side, that is. Then, uh, I need to cast Protect. You. You also need Protect. Then, we're going to use... Something to double everybody's HP. Uh, where is it? Stamina tonic. Doubles HP of max. Oh, maximum HP of party. So everybody has now forty thousand maximum HP approximately. And we should only take a bit over ten thousand from obliteration. No. We kind of also really want to heal up. So I'm going to go ahead and double cast Drain on the right arm. Oof, this is healing less than I hoped it would, to be completely honest. So I'm going to quick pocket Mega Elixirs. And no matter what this thing does, everybody should survive this in theory. So I think it is time for me to start cheer to increase everybody's physical defense. The attack power increase is at this point mostly irrelevant. From what I can tell we deal mostly maximum damage anyways. Just use another one real quick. And tier number two. Calamity. It would be optimal if you hit Lulu with this rather than anybody else. Because she still has a ribbon equipped. So Calamity basically from what I can tell inflicts everything. So this is to get rid of the breaks, so uh, Kimara is going to survive basically everything. This is to get rid of the negative status effects. 
and we have Kimari back to normal, if you will. So, back to cheering. This is cheer number three. And there's the regeneration. That wasn't after boss turn. Alright, let's count turns after I kill the thing and see whether that is an indication. Maybe it's... it doesn't matter how fast I am. It's gonna be as many turns as the thing is gonna take. And... well... Let's go ahead and start the weakening. this arm while healing up. So that is basically one attack. After five attacks that thing is dead. Two attacks. Three attacks. Actually did that tier four or tier five times so far? Does anybody remember? Ooh, right, Kimari does not protect anymore. Hit number three. It's gonna double cast Drain. Actually, Kyuraga is better, I suppose. Okay, this is the part where... Well, if the thing attacks physically, it's gonna deal about 20,000 damage and we'll have to heal up specifically anyways. But no matter what, we'll have to heal up. So, this should be attack number 4 on this thing. One more. And we should be done with this. Even through Mighty God, I should kill this. Alright. Now we have Lulu start healing. And use Protect. Oh, well that's just mean. I do feel... okay, wait, hang on, how many was that? Killed it. Then... I cast Protect on Kimari, and I healed Kimari. The last two turns so far. This is gonna be turn number three. Unfortunately, it's gonna deal, take about 20,000 damage, but at least it's not gonna die here. This is turn number four. Oh, it's actually a lot less than that, I suppose. Five. Six. Nice crit. Seven, eight, I'm trying to think whether I can do anything particularly clever here. I think it's time to attack the left uh, well, the arm mode there. 9, 10. Lulu will heal herself. The 
11. Well, oh, that thing is not dead yet. We need it. Oh, wait. Oh, this could be bad. Fifteen. I think this was fifteen. I think this was 15. This is not gonna heal you enough, is it? Really? But it should at least deal the remaining damage. This five and six could be dead. It's not dead. How did I miscount that much? I know he has region, but I figured it's not gonna be that much. Huh. Oof. because you have magic boost. That was three, say four. Oh boy, all right, four. If I increase focus, this would increase my magic healing and damage. Five. I didn't think I should focus on healing first. Six. Double cast rain. Seven. I wish there was like a dream strike or something like that, but there's no map mystic knight in this. Kind of what to use. Damages an enemy and dispels magic effects. 
Oh, maybe that's gonna be better to use than just casting this spell. Because it's damage as well. Alright, I want to reduce his party MP cost to zero. Not sure how useful that really is. Nine. Ten. Eleven. All right. This is where I really wish I <laughs> had spot some more Mega Elixirs. Twelve. Let's start dealing damage, shall we? Thirteen. Oh yeah, Protect still? But you don't have Region anymore. Well, it doesn't matter, probably. So we're gonna double cast. Fourteen. So I expect the thing to revive after one or two turns here. This should be a last focus, I think. Maybe one more. Fifteen. There it is. I was right. It's fifteen turns. One. I did not keep track of the other one. Ah. Well, that that answers that one. Two attacks. Three attacks. Four attacks. Five attacks. Should have maybe used double cast with Lulu. Now the biggest question will be... But I will be able to take out both of the things before they can do anything. One. Two. I'm gonna double cast. Ultima. It's gonna knock out the arm on the right. And deal that one damage on the left. So there's gonna be attack number three on the left. So three more. I assume it's the same HP on the left arm, but I don't technically know, I guess. Four. Five. Six. Alright, it is the same. All right, now. That was four turns, so I have about ten turns to do things. I'm gonna use Lulu to heal everybody after the next attack. Ten. Nine. Ooh. We need, need more maximum HP, huh? So that is 8. I'm actually gonna use you to heal as well. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Oh, that was one up. Alright. Just gonna go straight for it. Ten. 
pack number three. I lost that little doll just jumping up there and whack! It's like a truck. Five. Oh, shoot. That was one too many. Uh, that's fine. Gonna combine dealing damage to the left one. And doing this. One. Now we count to 15 again. Three. Four. You missed. Really? I? I didn't know you could miss. Six. Okay, Kimari and Titus need healing now. I didn't know you could miss. Eight, nine. But we need to use at least one aim. Ten. It's gonna use an aim here. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Um... Fourteen... It is fourteen, actually. Unless I miscounted again. One. Two. Oh, maybe the double cars actually count double. Ah, that would kind of make sense. actually lost count, but it doesn't matter. I just quick hit it until it's knocked out. And then immediately after we need to knock out the other one as well. There it is. That was turn number one. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh no, I think it's getting faster. Oh, that's not good. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. 
I. Six. Seven. And eight, probably. Wait, why am I counting? I'm not counting for the left arm, am I? Immediately after one attack. Two. Three and four. This is still max damage. Seven. It is. Well, with a crit, anyways. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Don't regenerate. Twelve. Thirteen. Okay, it doesn't go faster. I just miscounted. Shit. This is gonna be super slow at this rate, but as long as he does well, if he doesn't change his face in any capacity, he'll be able to do this. Eventually, but yeah, it's gonna be not fast. And at this point, it might not matter for me to uh, continue counting anymore. In fact, I would just stop counting and just assume that I get like three attacks in on the thing. At most. Kind of trying to think whether it might be more efficient for me to just leave that arm alive, but considering that it frequently eats up multiple turns of mine, I am reasonably certain. It just makes more sense to just straight up kill it every time as well. But again, this is just going to make this super slow across the board. Because I'm getting what? Three attacks in? Before he regenerates. Two. I get two attacks. Actually, it's exactly... <laughs> I'm getting full cycles exactly at this point. That's kind of funny. Drain. 
because now I need to heal Lulu again, and we do this via double drain. At some point I'll probably have to sneak in a quick pocket here or there, but for the most part... I guess this is just what we're gonna do now. <laughs> I guess one thing I hadn't considered until just now, there's not much of a purpose for me to kill these things, or kill them off specifically at least, until they are about to get a turn. So I think what I should do... What I should do is basically bring them until they are one hit away from getting knocked out and then do the thing. So that's gonna be the plan here. One. Two. Three, four, five. So this is basically just under 500,000 damage. Oh, but it's getting a turn very soon. But technically I can just still squeeze it out of here. But I also don't technically know whether it has the same amount of HP, so I think it's one more hit. Let me actually just confirm that. The number 6 kills it. Alright, so it does have 500,000 HP as well. Good to know. So, but I'm gonna start doing this exactly now. Three, four, and five. So, one more of any attack will kill it. So, I'm going to use the remaining time here to attack the boss instead. Pockets, Mega Elixir. Basically, I'm kind of trying to see whether I can, like, area of effect attack both arms at the same time and kind of effectively get one more hit in on both of them, but no. Alright. Double cast, just two Ultimas. This will kill the arm on the side again. Assuming it didn't miscount. Because that could be really bad if I miscounted right here. Alright. Good thing it didn't miscount. Ah, there it is. So, going to do the same thing here again. One. 
two. Wait, you only regenerated the arm after I killed the other one. I wonder whether that's... Hmm. Three. Kind of funny that Lulu does more reliable damage than the others because her damage is not based on HP. <laughs> Four. And five. All right. So now, the thing has 5 HP or something like that. So I'm just going to area of effect kill it as soon. As we get to just before its turn. You can do. I hope it's gonna be fine for me to ultima you and you don't counterattack me. Uh, I'm just gonna single target flare here. Just in case it counterattacks, and I don't want it to double counterattack. Regenerate immediately after. Okay. I don't know what this thing will do now. So, it's about to find out. Attack number one. Oh, I really want to heal up Lulu to full. So, we're gonna do this. So, it doesn't seem to counter attack Ultima, so I assume attacking it is fine. Okay, that's attack number two on that arm. Immolation. That sounds like fire. Alright, sure. I mean, it's kind of mean, but it's not that big of a deal. I just hope you don't have instant death attacks. That would be very inconvenient. What I do notice is this thing is way faster now. Holy cow. We do kind of want to give Lou. Oh, we don't have. We have more two elixirs. We want to give her MP back, basically. Attack number four. Five. And I'm very tempted to just knock it out right here. Uh, actually, I'm gonna Sentinel here, just to see. Lulu is the only one who has a ribbon right now. The only two I only have Stoneproof. Which in the end I didn't even need with the strategy. Oh, we can block Immolation with Sentinel. That's good to know. Oh. Oh, that's just rude. Good to know, but super rude. So, I didn't realize this, but... Apparently... Ooh, this is not dead yet. Thought that was the last hit. Here it is. Feels like it has actually a fair bit more than 500,000 HP. It's more like 550. Either way, apparently... Immolation in produces armor break. I didn't... Well, I didn't expect that, so I didn't check for it. So, mainly want to give Lulu MP back because she kind of needs that to attack. We'll see whether he counterattacks. He doesn't seem to counterattack. 
Lulu I'll have automatically protect, so she is generally speaking fine. But I excuse me, do want to sentinel her up. Oh shoot, she doesn't have double HP anymore. Ah, uh, that's... That's not good. Still going to use Sentinel on her. One. Two. Okay, if this is all you do, I don't have to worry about area of effect attacks anymore, actually. Which literally just dispel Lulu and we're fine. Three. Still kind of spooked about it. Four. Um. Going to use... This to double your maximum HP. Five. Wait, what? How am I this bad at counting? Oh no. Sentinel you up. Hopefully next turn I get uh, an opportunity to do stuff. One. Relation again. Yeah, she is fine. The n <laughs> it's actually kind of annoying that she exactly had us. The stipulation that she does more damage with the closer she is to maximum MP. Three. Because now, how do I heal with you? Because if I. Oh, right, your spells actually do close to MP now. Because you don't have the thing anymore. Oh, that's inconvenient. Twin stars. Double cast as well rain. Oh, no, it does just have over. Hm. Here it is. Here I go. Did I dispel the thing last time, Lulu? Let's see real right quick. Nope, I did not! Oh dear. No wonder you dealt even less damage. Ah, inconvenient. But I think we are mostly stabilizing for now. It's really inconvenient that it removes my MP, though. But I don't know whether it inflicts any other status effects that Lulu happens to be immune to, thanks to the ribbon. Well, it would say immune if it did, right? Hmm. One. Two. 
here. Have you dispel yourself? Three. Four. Five. We go back up to Sentinel. So this should kill the arm on the left and start damaging the arm on the right while also damaging the boss of it. Thanks Lulu. I just occasionally need to heal Lulu I guess. Again, this is where I wish I had more elixirs and stuff. Okay, this is gonna be hit number two. On this thing. Hit number three. Number four, five, and one more will do the trick. Sentinel up, and this is where I wish Kimari would have better magic power. Maybe I should bring in Yuna for this. Just trying to think. Yuna does have a... well actually she does not have magic boost. And switching Kimari's weapon could lead to disastrous results because I'm probably not gonna deal enough damage with physical, so... Well that's just going to be how it is. One heal will let her survive two emulations as long as I remember to remove the armor break. This should kill that thing. I feel like I have time to briefly heal Lulu here. Very, very briefly time. One. Yeah, I need to sentinel here again. Two. Three. Did I miss count again? What is happening? The last attack should always be ultimate, just to get some more damage in on the center. Just going to make sure Lulu is gonna be healthy. I'm kind of trying to think whether there is some better equipment I could get on the other two characters. Your I'm just actually curious, how much damage does your quick kick do with 0 MP? Eh, not that great. Still attack number 1 right here. Number 2. Number 
number three. I've gotten barely enough attacks in in order to... Well, actually, no, I haven't attacked the center part at all. <laughs> Thinking about it. Put regional ruler or will it be dispelled? It will be dispelled because I have to dispel her myself. Since she gets armor break right here. If I don't remove the armor break, she would get one shot by the next attack, guaranteed. Also, how many attacks was this? Actually, it doesn't matter. I need to attack this thing full on anyways. So effectively, one character is full on occupied. This is actually kind of matters because I could get potentially some more attacks in on the main frame here. Yeah. And the other one comes back. Inconvenient. But we can work through it. One. Now I need to keep track. Two. By Lulu? I don't know what status of X this thing might apply, besides the armor breaks. He's the only one who has a ribbon equipped. Four. Five. So one more attack. It basically has no HP remaining at this point. How much HP left approximately? I don't want to know. Because I don't know how much this HP this thing has to begin with. I hope that makes sense. Uh, gonna have you heal. Up the sentinel, my friend. And there's that thing back again. Alright. We are slowly getting damage on the main part without investing any resources whatsoever, so we can go basically on forever. One. But it's just gonna be a super slow fight at this rate. But at the same time, that's going to be how it is? I guess that's okay. Attack number two. Three. Four. Five. One more, we'll knock it out. So we're gonna basically delay knocking it out. Hey, Lulu actually gets something else to do occasionally. That's unusual. I don't know what you can do, Lulu. <laughs> um, I don't even want to do anything with you aside from just defend for now. Technically, I could get some damage in, I guess. Heal herself. Actually, it's a good point. How much do you heal yourself here? Wait, I have a better idea. We're gonna cost auto life. Yeah. I, because I don't know whether this thing has like a ultimate death attack where I have to have auto life on my cactus. So 
suggest that. Uh, Lulu has over 30,000 HP right now. Hey, I get a taxing on the center. Mari will have to ult him, huh? Ah, nice. That's actually pretty much exactly what I was hoping for. It would regenerate on the left side. I know it's called a right arm, but I'm just talking from my perspective. Alright, one attack on the left side. Once again, we need to get up to six. I did dispel you, right, Lou? Yes. Alright. Here. Three. Four. Five. The Kimari will be the one to knock it out, so... I can get one attack in or I should heal Lulu, probably. Now, note to self, I have only landed Ultima on it, so I do need to quick hit the left part specifically. Any reason you can't use Tidus' limit break? Can't he multi-target? His multi-target is not particularly reliable, like it's random which targets he hits on one hand. Plus, the biggest problem about the limit breaks is that they do not ignore defense. So, the celestial weapons we have equipped on everybody right now, by default, de uh, ignore defense. And if I didn't have that, I'm pretty sure my damage would be even worse as than it is right now. Okay, did I dispel you already? Probably not. No. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. One more. Am I that bad at counting? I do not know what's going on. I'm very confused right now. Um, Lulu gets an additional turn next cycle. It's not this cycle. There it is. Pack number one. Number two.
five. Okay. Pitis is gonna ult him, huh? Kimari has a turn to heal. Luna actually gets two turns here. For all the life, I guess, on Kimari as well. I'm pretty sure if we need to use the other life, we're dead anyways. But, who knows. Double cast, Ultima, Ultima. It's not much damage on the main part of the boss, but it's more. And we get that sixth hit already in on the other arm. So this is basically a head start. <laughs> nice Rekidactylus. I like it. Okay, one. Two. You actually have to straight up attack it. Kimari, you're a hero! <laughs> hey, I got two attacks in on the thing. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. How was Penance? Well, I got into a second phase and it's super slow <laughs> because this is my strategy, just keep knocking out the arms. One. Two. Dispel you again. Three. Four. Go back to Sentinel. Bye. Did I miscount? Or did they just randomly revive below six thousand, uh, below five thousand, five hundred thousand HP? I'm very confused again. Like, feel free to tell me if I miscounted. Because it's very inconvenient if they don't have their maximum HP, since kind of... Yeah, maybe I deal more than 99,000 and the 99 damage. I don't think so, but I don't technically know. One... Two, three, four. Need to go Sentinel again, Lulu. Five. Okay, that didn't kill it. Good. Titus is going to Ultima next turn. So Kimari has time to hit the boss.
This is attack number six. Regeneration One. You need to dispel still? No, you did dispel. You have time to heal, technically. Let's see, how much did you heal? Despite having zero MP. Oh, still basically the full. Okay. Let's see. Pack number two. Attack number three. Attack number four. Attack number five. This should not kill it. It didn't. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's actually what I want. We have time for one quick hit. Just one, but hey, it's one more than before. <laughs> less efficient to do it without attack reels? Yeah, it's probably also less efficient than using any other proper strategy that I just don't know about. But specifically attack reels. I mean, I don't dislike Blitzball, but I don't spend, want to spend another 10 hours doing that. Then again, arguably, it would take me less time to defeat this thing with using Blitzball on top of it <laughs> at this rate. One. Three. Did I miscount? <laughs> it feels like this happens every time after he uses emulation. The, it just knocks out the arm. This would have been an amazing opportunity for me to get way more damage in on the boss because I didn't have to worry about uh, the thing recovering as quickly again. Maybe the left arm has less HP? Not usually. That do kinda need to heal Lulu at some point, and this is an opportunity right now. Hey, we get one quick hit in before it recovers. There it is. Like, I'm not even counting the turns anymore. I just know it's gonna recover, because that's the cycle that we're on. <laughs> Alright. One. Two. Four. Maybe I should do the last two hits towards the end. Like here, I should probably use Kimari to attack the center instead. Oh, you get another turn in before them. 
So I should do the last two hits, basically. At the opportune time instead. I think that would kind of make the most sense. I'm just very spooked that it might not be sufficient now. Actually, I should use Ultima first here. Ultima 1. And 2. Just in case it only revives for some reason with 400,000 HP. This should kill it, but I will assume I will need an additional attack with Tidus. And there it is. Let's just hit it. He's down. Lulu gets actually an additional turn in so she can heal herself here. Okay, that was hit number one on the arm over here. One. Two. This is number two now. This is number three now. Oh no. I'm only getting five attacks in before the arm goes. Um. Lulu is not going to be able to contribute a sufficient amount. So... Alright, where's my quick pockets? Don't have any more Alexis. Quick pockets. Oh wait, I need Sentinel to red up anyways. Uh oh. Oh, Tidus gets another turn, so does Kimari. Okay, we're fine. I was kinda spooked there. I was going to attack with Lulu here as well. Actually, do I get an attack in with Quick Hit? I do, actually. Hit. Might as well use that opportunity. Uh, I should hit it sooner rather than later because I already damaged it with Ultima, so it doesn't matter whether the left arm is going to revive here. Because I'm not gonna get more, much more attacks in anyways. I feel like I should just heal when I have a good opportunity, and this is a good opportunity right here. Even though it's one less hit on the thing. Alright. Good to know that Lulu always goes at least twice, even though she literally just got her turn barely before the boss. Though she is slightly faster than it. Attack number one. Number two. Three. Every time Lulu doesn't move, I'm just wondering. Oh, wait, did I forget the Sentinel? No, it's fine. Because it's attacking her. Or. Alright. I'm gonna go on the boss instead this time. I need to just get in 5 and 6. Okay, 
Air 6 is gonna be Ultima. Right here. One thing I literally only just now thinking of is I wonder if I could power up an Aeon to a sufficient degree where it could just take out these things without any trouble. I think probably not because an Aeon is literally just one entity versus, you know, multiples. Okay, one. Well, actually, no, that's two. But I need to go on for the quick hits directly. Three. Four. Mega Sisters you can't directly control, so I would not want to rely on the strategies. But it's technically potentially possible. This is number 5. I need to attack twice before it goes anyway, so... We do attack it here no matter what. I think Lulu gets two, three turns next turn, so... I'm gonna go for the boss here, rather than healing. Oh yeah, I guess Aeons don't get quick hit, so that wouldn't help. I wonder, are Aeons susceptible to... Armor Break? Because if they're not susceptible to Armor Break, you could just... take something like... Anima with multi-hit. AoE and then just always power up for overdrives. I'm actually curious whether that would work. One. They are immune to breaks. Interesting. Two. Four. Okay. You have time to heal this time around. Alright, we're gonna delay attacking this thing. With the two last hits. As long as I get two more hits in, we are fine. Any reason why Lulu tanks and not Waka or Oran? Uh, wait. What's happening? Hang on. Yeah, we're dead now. Uh, we need two attacks on the thing. I don't have enough for quick pockets.
that your first Armageddon? I didn't know he could do that. Otherwise, I would have focused more on the other arm, too. Uh... I need slightly more than a hundred thousand damage on the arm on the left still. Titus is blinded, he's not gonna be able to attack properly. If he wasn't silenced I could do some shenanigans. Fortunately he's silenced too. And that as well. Um, can I bribe you to go away? We need to increase the targets. Ah, uh, this is where I wish I gave you all the haste. See what happens. There's not enough damage on that one arm. Immolation? Wait, you go single target now on me? I figured you would always go Armageddon if you have two armors. Oh god, that is not good for you now. And this is where I wish you had other stuff to fish. Don't hit Lulu. <laughs> That's the funny part, we're not technically dead yet, but practically we probably mostly are. So the thing is, I can... Let me think about this. What does the... So, I can technically knock out one arm. With Nova. The boss is gonna go, however, so we're not gonna survive the counter. So this is not a good idea. Lulu has the highest probability of surviving. Let's see. Mighty Guard. Oh, it's gonna heal up all the things. Still alive for now. Thank you, Mary. I need you to know where we have the arm on the left. Two arms! <laughs> yeah, it has two arms, that's the problem, apparently. Panzergum Fluffle, thank you so much for 41 months of support. Welcome back. If tier 2. And I'm glad you enjoy your stay. I hope you're doing well.
Not great. Hit Yuna, please. Hit Yuna, please. I guess Kimari works too, since he is recovering for a long time, so it's not Titus. Alright. That's quote-unquote okay. Yuna would have been perfect, though. Okay, this thing can use Tetra Graviton. And the problem about this is we don't have enough maximum HP to survive. Waka, do you have haste right now? You do, that's actually useful. Oh shoot, I just... hang on, no. If this thing physically attacks and petrifies Yuna, we're in big trouble. But Tetra Graviton is going to kill both Lulu and Kimari. Ah. Uh. <laughs> so let's see, what's more important? Making sure that Yuna doesn't get Petrify removed? Because I don't see a way to survive just with the only two characters. Or. Actually, Kimari can also get Petrify removed. Try haste her. Oh, well, I technically can. Koba fetish. Doesn't make her go before, though. That's the catch. So, Tetra Graviton is going to kill two cactus. Yuna would technically be able to move afterwards, but it's not great. But having a character straight up removed through the physical attack would be worse. Alright, we're gonna Sentinel up here. Okay. Not dead yet. Problem is gonna be dead soon at this rate. And I need to actually get rid of the arm sooner rather than later too. Alright. Phoenix. Yeah, that's a problem. You know, still slowed. We technically have dealt some damage to the arm on the right. Arm on the right is gonna go again soon. Don't hit Tato's, please. Hit- actually, Lulu might survive. Hit Lulu, please. Ah, that's the wrong guy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, you actually get two turns with quick pockets. So, um, I think no matter what, if the dude is going to use his big attack, we're dead. The problem is we also dead if we don't get to knock down the arms soon rather than later. I feel like the main problem is that I just didn't know about this attack. To begin with, um... Flee? <laughs> I mean, we can technically flee. Um... I'm trying to think whether there's anything clever I can do at this point. 
At least you know better. Honestly, I don't feel like fighting this thing again. It's just not interesting. <laughs> like, I'm genuinely just bored. Um... Like, this is the most interesting situation we had all fight at this point. Uh, trying to think what I can do here. Let's see, what do we need to have happen? We need the boss to not use his area of effect attack. So that's kind of a given, we just need him to not do that. Then, what else do we need to do? He needs to emulate Kimari or Lulu for them to get auto phoenixed by Tedus. And then what do we need the arms need to do? They just basically slap just the same character three times. Like Kimari gets phoenixed uh, revived, Kimari gets phoenix revived. That's kind of what needs to happen here. Yeah, I could technically heal everybody with a quick pocket, with a mega elixir, but in order to survive Tetra Graviton on Kimari and Tidus. But that kind of implies that I survived the previous turns already, I guess. And I haven't dealt any damage at that point. Um. Oh, I can do another quick pocket actually, apparently. Quick pocket apparently is super quick. Yeah, quick pocket is ridiculously fast. Uh... I wish you weren't slowed, you know. Go for a grand summon on the Magus Sisters, actually. Because this is multi kill, right? Maybe I should have Anima. Buy new powers. I was really hoping that it might knock out one of the arms or two. Optimally, he's going to kill... ...all of them with one attack at a time. Calamity, okay, I'm alright with this. Slow God, Lulu's, uh, Yuna is already slowed anyways. And we did. I mean, we had a chance there for a second. The thing is, regeneration already healed him enough so that even if I was once close to killing him, I'm no longer. So, yeah. GG. <laughs> he actually hit through blind. <laughs> That's kind of funny.
Actually, I forgot Terry Graviton also put sleep and do one cactus. He hits through blind because of luck. Oh, I didn't even realize that would work that way too. I actually really like this music right now. Well... What's the most efficient way to max out your stats, Anima? You would need to give you agility somehow. I need speed spheres to improve agility. That's a lot of speed spheres for one agility point, I suppose. It will take a long time, yeah. I'm mainly just curious whether there's like some clever way where if I could just have Anima have an overdrive ready every single time the two hands come up and just slap them down. You can get agility on Yuna. That might be more efficient. She technically has the sphere with maxed out. How does the stats transfer work to... Aeons, by the way. Is it like half gets transferred, or how does it work? So technically, if I manage to get Anima fully kitted out, put Protect on Anima, put Kuraga on Anima, Anima doesn't have auto haste. Ah, that's right, we would need haste as well. Protect haste. Well, not in that order. Haste protect. Overdrive. Heal up. Curiously enough, the biggest problem would be running out of magic. Because I would be healing up through magic. So I think this could be an interesting approach here. Maybe it's rain could be better for healing, as in it could cost less MP. A fair suggestion. Yeah, Osmos would allow us to recover MP once. You're gonna get slowed at some point. I thought Aeons are immune to slow. No, I'm not gonna get slowed. Unless one of the... So here's the plan. I don't know whether that's gonna work out, but the plan is... We basically use Anima's Ultima to one-shot both of the arms on the side. And then we charge up the Overdrive in between... To use Anima's Ultima or Overdrive again... As soon as they get revived. So I should never get slowed to begin with, because I'm not gonna let one of the arms do anything. Osmos actually does not cost any MP. It's zero in this game. 
But it's true, I would actually... But it, yeah, it's true actually, I would need to... The funny thing is, I feel like I could have recovered that if I just gave Yuna auto haste. Hmm. You can't take away all the spheres on Yuna? How would you do that? Can you un... thing? This spell for Mighty Guard as well. Well, they wouldn't, like with the strategy I have in mind, they would never get to Mighty Guard to begin with. Well, yeah, but you cleared the entire spheres on the grid. You would have to put them back in at some point. That's not okay. <laughs> yeah, it removes them from everyone. I don't think that's a good strategy. So Anima has a multi-hit ultimate. Well, actually, I suppose another question would be... We do have both strength and magic power maxed out. So actually... Unless I can one-shot... Hang on, that's an interesting thing. Hi, I would like to try something real quick. So right now, my magic power is maxed out anyways on anime, right? So... Unless this overdrive right here with maxed out attack power and stats one-shots both of the arms, my strategy is not gonna work to begin with. I mean, I assume the suggestion is it with the best intentions. So I do appreciate the ideas. Oh, you don't have maxed out. Oh. Hmm. Hang on, I'm not ready yet. Be right back. Overdrive, you know, set mode. What do you have currently? Victor's. Victor is fine. Your count. Hi, I'd like to very, very briefly buy something yeah. random. Here we go. You can flee from penance? <laughs> yeah, you can just run away. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Alright, we need to very briefly just win this battle. Sorry, guys. Is this the last boss? You've never bothered to challenge him. I feel like it's fine to not bother, to be honest. It's kind of our last boss, I guess. Okay. Get your overdrive? Nope, still need a little bit more.
Max stats and Horde items for the next game. <laughs> I should... By the way, I've mentioned this at the beginning of the stream, but today is the last day I'm going go. to play post-game for Final Fantasy X. Because, honestly, to me, penance is just boring at this point, because there's nothing tricky that I need to do, like... I'm sure there's something I'm missing that you could optimize and do better. But experimenting with basically anything just feels really punishing across the board. Which game is next? That's an excellent question. Which is, by the way, I started the stream today about an hour later than I wanted to because I was thinking, but if I, for some reason, managed to defeat Pen Penance early, what game would I be playing next? I don't know what game would be next. Oblivion! Well, that 9,000. That is not enough. That was a fun thought. I mean, 200,000 is actually still a decent amount of things considered. Hi, guys. Good night. Want to know a silly mechanic regarding the arms that isn't useful to you? Ah, uh, sure. Go ahead, Global Kaiser. Feel free to mention it. <laughs> if the arms die to doom, they take twice as long to respawn. You know, Doom is actually an interesting point. Because I feel like I would reach the 200 turn limit. Before I would kill the thing. So maybe I should just use Doom and just repeatedly kill the arms. I kinda wanna do that. Hang on. Let's try to get that set up. Why not? I don't really feel motivated to actually straight up fight this thing. But that sounds stupid enough that I would like to try it. Emulation is a physical attack and counter attack works. Yeah, that could act on that much. Time for Zanmato. I'm actually very strongly considering just Zanmato, but before that... Um, do you have any haste armor? No. That was your suggestion? Sorry, God's Black Arm, did I miss it? If Kimari was tanking, he would have been countering each emulation. Right. Actually, feel free to tell me, does emulation do anything in terms of status effects? Because, again, the main reason why I was tanking that with Lulu is because she's the only one who had a ribbon. So, it could just have any status effect. What if we got a sandworm to eat penance and then use sentinel to banish it? <laughs> it would still be technically there and just occupy everybody from the shadow realm. Armor and mental break are the only statuses. Wait, you don't even get your power broken? Wow. <laughs> That's kind of fun actually. Uh 
Um. Either way. Let's do the stupid idea. I like it. Here we go. Let's go for 200 turns. Emulation brings MP as well. Well, yeah. Hi, buddy. Alright, let's get this started like it did last time. Murray. Quick hit. Need to get rid of this arm immediately, basically. Titus. Quick hit. And Lulu Quick hit. Lulu can miss. We've seen it once. Also, I lost count already. Oh no! <laughs> Kinda forgot about the part where I wanted to keep track. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and double cast some Ultima. Technically, Oren would be the best tank, you think, because of his Celestial? It's an interesting point, yeah. Was it 5? Alright, this is number 6 right here. And using Rikos 3 of 999 to auto push. Actually, th that's a question I'm having. If I use Rikos 3 of 9999. Doesn't that reduce my damage from 99,000 and help the 99 down to, well, 10,000? Or does that not affect it? Am I gonna try the boss one more time? Yeah, because I have a stupid idea. And I kinda wanna try the stupid idea. Attack number two. What was phase one again? Oh yeah. The attack. Uh, we just hope the thing doesn't do anything stupid. Kind of need to get a little bit lucky on the arms attack in phase one here. You override damage limit, ignore the tray of 9999. Oh, well that's good to know. Because I was not using it because I figured, oh, it's just gonna reduce the damage then. Which clearly in that case is not the case. Auto life helps a lot. The catch is, if I need auto life, I'm dead, from what I can tell. Can't really recover for the most part. Mighty God, I'm actually pretty happy about that. So... This is the part where I can actually start setting up. Gear 1, and... Here's the stupid idea. I don't know whether... Well, actually, have I tried it? gonna take forever, but probably less- Oh no! <laughs> okay, I'm out. I'm gone, I don't wanna play this anymore. <laughs> I would have played out 200 turns. But no. I think I'm done. <laughs> well, for now. I might have motivation to come back to this some other time, but... I really want to play another game sometime. It's 200 turns for the arms only. Yeah. Hammers on Mato? I guess we could try on Mato, huh? We're count. This point. You know what? No, I'm not gonna do it. 
I'm not gonna zone Matra because I think once I have my share of other games I will come back to this sometime. Maybe I'm just gonna watch Background Guy or 2 and 7 Sins defeat Pedants. And until then, I wanna. I wanna kind of like theory craft. Maybe I can come up with something clever. But at this point, I feel like. I two parts. On one, I feel like there's nothing clever I can do. And two, if there is something, I just don't know the game well enough in order to come up with it. That's just kind of my current impression. Is it 15 turns? I guess the first turn is already when you kill the thing. You're guessing they both use San Mato though, it's a race after all. I would be surprised actually. Using Zalmatos against the race rules, yeah, I feared as much. I would be very surprised. Because it just kind of feels like they want to go for like the honorable playthrough, if you will. What are they racing? Actually, let's see where the 7 is online, because... Here's the thing, I don't know what else to play today, specifically. Like, I just... I think I need a few days of break from trying to finish Final Fantasy X, but... I have a request, everybody. What would you like me to see play? In the next few days. I would like to have suggestions, I would like to know your impression, ideas, and if you have a rough estimate on how long the uh, suggestions would take... <laughs> Solitaire stream. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you have any suggestions and especially on how long it would take to play these, I would kind of be grateful for that. Because I've been kind of doing some silly side projects offline and my mind is currently just kind of swirling around those. But yeah. Let me... Um, let me actually start writing down suggestions while I'm blabbering on. And if you have more suggestions, you can put them into Discord or into a stream here as well, etc. If I played Baba is here, there's DLC now, isn't there? I'm gonna write that down already. I have played Baba is here to completion at the time. And we turn the level into something else. Seven has a replay running right now. Oh, he does not play today? Ah, I see. Have I played Final Fantasy Seven? Not really. <laughs> People keep saying Final Fantasy Seven Saga. Well, that's an interesting one. I don't know whether I would have the... Oh my. And yes, I have played ES1. In fact, I have done a 12-hour challenge on ES1 before. Two, I think, I played as well. I don't remember. Shin Megami Tensei 5. Persona 5. Not quite my cup of tea, I have to admit. The whole of Seven Sagas, the game is Final Fantasy X Penance. So here's the thing, but if you know what you're getting into with Seven Sagas, it's okay. Final Fantasy Tactics is enjoyable. I'm gonna write it down, but I have to admit, the chance of me ever playing Final Fantasy Tactics is kind of low. But I'm gonna just put it down for now. Maybe I will sometimes feel like it, but... Maybe the Diablo 2 challenge is used a bit. Uh... Right, you did submit a bunch of challenges. That's a good point, actually. I'm gonna pull up my list of challenges. Seven Saga is less tedious. Possibly. I mean, I would pick Camille though, because it just kind of feels like the most appropriate character. Did you ever see Judgment Day? I probably haven't. Final Fantasy VI actually is an interesting suggestion. T edition. You vote for seven, that's fair. Oh, Judgment. Oh, I figured you were talking about a movie or a game or something. 
Yeah, I didn't know Judgment Day existed, because I always happened to kill the arms off before they did anything. So, I got knocked out. I almost recovered, I feel like, but... Yuna didn't have auto haste. If she did, we might have been able to do it. You have lots of suggestions. Go ahead. Have you ever played Final Fantasy Type-0 or Last Remnant? Uh... I remember the name Last Remnant, but no, uh, no to both. Type zero. Also, I'm just gonna put Final Fantasy dimensions here because I know Vila Car would suggest that. Ever played the Sweet Cotton series? No. You suggest Voice of Cards, but the encounter rate is super high. I've never heard of that one. What system is that on? Grandia Crosscode. Crosscode. Nino Kuni. Evil Land. Evil Land is neat. I played through that one. Crosscode? I just never felt like playing Crosscode, despite like many people always suggesting it being amazing. Dragon Quest 11. I don't really like Dragon Quest battle system, I have to admit. Like, I would play Dragon Quest 2 and 4, because I think they are pretty interesting. And it's fun to go back in the relic of their time. Oh, a good snowman is hard to build. I like that one, Justin. A good snowman is hard to build. That's an excellent suggestion. By the way, I'm very slowly just catching up on chat. I'm really slow at reading. Legend of Lagai is a very cool RPG with an pretty interesting battle system. It is, I agree. I have to admit, I'm not interested in playing it, but it is very interesting. Thank you for the suggestion. If you add it to the playlist, you're gonna vote for it for Last Remnant, I see. Breath of Fire 3 and 4. Breath of Fire 2 actually would be interesting. Because I can actually... I... Hang on. At some point I had a Breath of Fire Dragon Quarters PlayStation disc, but I have no idea where that one is. Breath of Fire 2 I do have access to. I don't have access to Breath of Fire 3 or 4. Second in cross codes, that's fair. Actually, how long does cross code take? With a retranslation patch? It probably would use the retranslation patch, yes. Question. In comparison to Lufia 2, how would you compare Lufia 2 puzzles with cross-code puzzles? Mother 3, that's a really good suggestion. I like that one. I kind of wanted to play that one since a long time. You can hug Snowman. I like Snowman. <laughs> Let's see. Voice of Cards is recent release from Square Enix. I played the Ori games. I played the first one. I've never actually played the You're later ones. Not. Let me go to. What did people like? Monkey is it? Just for a change of music. Because we are just talking about potential future games here. Mm -hmm. Littlewood and Survivalists are both pretty fun and cute. I remember hearing these. Littlewood. And I'm actually kind of feeling platformer or bullet hell. If that makes sense. Like, I've been thinking about Archvale as well, in case anybody would know that one. First playthrough of Crosscode was about 55 hours. Alright. Lufia 2 puzzles are turn-based, Crosscode puzzles are reflex-based. Right, but just kind of in terms of difficulty. Because Lufia 2 is my favorite kind of RPG with puzzles in it. Like, those puzzles are really good. 
Luffy at 2 would be neat. I guess it would be neat. I think I, both times I played Luffy at 2 in stream, I forgot to highlight it each time. Is there a retranslation patch for Luffy at 2? Love Wild Arms, that's an interesting one. They are not like Luffy at 2. I was more f like from in terms of how puzzly are they? Are they mostly just you just need to do the correct steps and these steps are obvious? Or do you actually need to figure out how they work? Which is what you need to do in Luffy at 2. Luf uh, Ori or Hollow Knight? I'm gonna write down Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight would be very interesting actually sometime. Wildfire? Short and sweet. I don't remember that one. It's Toho time. I mean, I like Toho games. My favorite Toho games are actually Shoot the Bullet and Double Spoiler, because it's basically boss rush. But I'm not sure how interesting that would be for people on stream. You think cross-code puzzles are less about figuring the solution, far more about figuring out the timing? Yeah, okay. But nothing in comparison to Luffy 2. Can still be fun though. You played Luffy 2 in Dutch back in the day. Oh yeah, that's right. That's one of the few games that did get translated to Dutch. I think I've heard of that. Alright, I finally arrived at the bottom of the chat. Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Do I have a PlayStation 5? No. The latest PlayStation I have is a PlayStation 2. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I like you. That's perfect timing with Rekodactylus and Royal Blue. Hello. Uh, Alright. No, that's a pretty sizable list already. So I thank you very much for the suggestions. That's really nice. But yeah, if I'm returning back to Final Fantasy X Penance, it will be probably not within the last next few days. It's gonna be one of these things where I think it's okay if, if I just don't feel like finishing it. But simultaneously. If I do ever feel like finishing it, it'd be interesting. I will probably look up strategies and tactics for penance, because that might actually get me motivated again, in case you're curious. So there's that. Which items on the list are you listed are that are you here yeah, that you are most interested in currently on the list is let's see Final Fantasy 6 is on the list that I'm interested in Mother 3 as well I was kind of thinking like I like RPGs but something more reflex based and people keep telling me cross code is really good so cross code could be something what else Actually, how do you play Grandia? Is that on Steam available? I know a lot of Square games these days are on Steam. Can I check my Steam, please? Uh, Grandia is on Steam. <laughs> uh, I, I see. Thank you, Ireland. I do appreciate it. Well, I guess I'm at least going to install it and see how it plays. Um, if you have any challenge suggestions, I was also thinking of maybe going back to Terraria. That could be interesting, I suppose. Final Fantasy X has the box of Pandora as post-game. 
Now that I basically know what is in the Final Fantasy X post game, it's less of a mysterious package to unravel and more of a... Just something you put on the wall, if you will, where it kind of is neat. But I don't have to necessarily play that at the end. Actually, the main game was really nice though. And yes, I actually played Time Spinner when it was released. Have I played Trails in the Sky FC? I'm not sure about FC, but I remember a certain someone gifting me Trails in the Sky recently. And I have actually downloaded it and started to prologue, if you will. First chapter. Okay. It is... It actually looks significantly different than I expected it to. So the style is quite neat. I haven't even gotten into a battle yet, though. Tackle the new mode they added for Terraria. That was the constant. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Mm. Have I tried Child of Light? I really like Child of Light. It's a great game. And actually, by the way, for anybody who does know Child of Light, that's about the length of a game I'm currently looking for. Yeah, I have played Child of Light and I've been taught how to speedrun it at some point. But I've forgotten everything, except for box jump. I still box jump. <laughs> Final Fantasy XIII, Nomadic, all missions run. I've never even played Final Fantasy XIII so far. Have you played CrossCode? No. But it is on the list of things. Return of the Obra Din. You know that's an excellent suggestion. I've not played that one. I like that one. Like, I know I like the concept of Obra Din, but I have never played it. It might be rather difficult to watch on stream, though. Child of Light Length? Yeah, it's about like 15 20 hours. Spirit Fairy is super sad. I've played that before, actually. The thing is, when I still had access to the Xbox thingy, the Game Pass, which apparently can't have that anymore in Switzerland, uh, when I still had access to that, I did actually download and play Spirit Fairy, which is a rather fascinating game. long as backseating is under control. So that's kind of the th interesting part, because Obra Dinn is a puzzle game. I actually do enjoy playing puzzle games alongside chat. So for anybody who does not know, that's also how we played Baba with you on stream. Like, I'm still going to be playing most of the things, and there's no way how we can know whether somebody actually knows the solution, but it kind of works out pretty well for the most part. Bastion or Transistor? I have not played Bastion in a really long time. Same with Transistor. I actually only played Transistor originally because I wanted to do, try and give some commentary for Wula Jin's run. Although... Well... <laughs> have I played Rogue Legacy? I don't like it. Yes. It's just not for me. I don't know what exactly it is, but it's just kind of the mix of things that... Not my cup of tea. We would you watch pl I mean, Minesweeper is pretty interesting. So is Sudoku, by the way. I've been playing way too much Sudoku recently. Outer Wilds is magical. Yes. I should put that on the list. I have actually... So here's one of the things. Outer Wilds is one of these games where I kind of regret... Just... Watching videos about it, because... It was really fascinating, and at the time I didn't think I would play it myself, and now I'm like, well, be, but if I do play it myself now, how interesting would it really be now? You cannot recommend I Am Setsuna? I remember when I Am Setsuna came out, and I was kind of initially interested, but... 
It was more of a mixed reception, even if it wasn't bad, from what I can tell. Have we done Katana Zero? I think so. Let me check. Katana. Eh, apparently not. Katana Zero. Do I know about it? No, I've never played that one. Katana Zero is a great game, but quite short. The beast decent mix of action and puzzle, and it's not too long. Alright. I'm gonna put that on the list. I will have to weed down the list quite a bit. Because I don't think we can have that many options in a straw poll. V V V V V V. That's really short, but at the same time, why not? How's your voice recovering? Still a ways to go, actually. I'm not entirely sure. It's better than yesterday, so it should be only a few more days. Sultan Sanctuary, I could play that again. I like that. But isn't Sultan Sacrifice coming out sometime soon? Yes, the music for VVVVVV is amazing. Radiant Historia is a really, really good RPG. It's another one of these names that keeps cropping up as well. <laughs> Radiant Historia. Radiant Historia. Hmm. Is it not on Steam? I guess not. I would need to look it up. Play Tanks on NES. I've never even heard of that one. Hard mode makes it harder, not far more. How would you play Radiant History? I don't have a 3DS capture card, by the way. And even if I did, I actually don't like playing on handheld devices. A Radiant Historia is the escape. Alright. It looks pretty good, actually. Battle Chase and Night War. I've never heard of that one. Mildly related. Everybody, since we are just kind of mostly just chatting right now. Two questions. One, what's your favorite music in Final Fantasy X? And two, What's one of the gaming achievements you're most proud of? Just one of them, not the best one. It could be the best one. Just curious, because that might give us more ideas. What about Death's Door? It's one of those games where I was really interested in playing it when I came out, but it just kind of fell off the radar since. We are Purifico. Right, where did that play? See more Omnis? Naturally, to Zanarkand, that's definitely great. Servants of the Mountain? Is that a game? Oh no, that's a music piece. Got it. Here we go! Oh, here for now. Alrighty. Music. Noito has really been your jam to watch lately. Noito is curious. Noito is one of these games where... I don't know. It's fascinating. But I'm not sure how interested I would be in playing it. Definitely intriguing. <laughs> 
killing Spike Tiger on Spike Secret of Mana sub somewhere between during 1993 and 94 was your biggest achievement. Nice. That is basically the most difficult boss in the game, honestly. Take care, Trustress. Thank you for dropping by and enjoy your Final Fantasy X. Finishing Trails of Cold Steel for Nightmare for Cheese and having no trouble doing that. Nice. Servants of the Mountain. Where does that one play? You're winning after Jelly Jam. Nice. Wait, tomorrow on our Aren't you kind of a year behind with 2021, Hoppy? But that's pretty awesome, actually. Sovereigns of the Mountain is Gagas at Ha, I see. I see. All is pretty neat. Alrighty, so everybody, so far on the list for of suggestions, thank you so much for plentiful suggestions. We currently have Baba Zero, probably going into the DLC. Final Fantasy VII, Seven Saga, Final Fantasy Tactics, Diablo II, some challenge runs, Final Fantasy VI, T Edition, quote unquote, but I might want to play through the base game first again. Last Remnant, Final Fantasy Type-0, Final Fantasy Dimensions, Voice of Cards, Grandia, Crosscode, Nino Kuni, Evil, and I actually don't know where I could play Nino Kuni. Evil Land, A Good Snowman is Hard to Build, Breath of Fire 2, Mother 3, Littlewood Archvale, Lufia 2, Hollow Knight, Wildfire, Trials in the Sky, Trails in the Sky, Terraria, The Constant, Map, Return of the Obra Dinn, Spiritfarer, Bastion, Transistor, Outer Wilds, Katana Zero, VVVVVV, Radiant Historia, Battle Chaser, Night War. So the thing is, I will still need to trim down the list quite a bit, so not everything I just mentioned will be on there. And as mentioned before, probably no Fan Fancy Tactics. I'm just not... I don't know, I'm not into Tactics game, largely. As weird as that might seem. Let me correct that. I'm into tactics game if they are really on small scale, or kind of like Shadowrun returns. Nino Kuhn is on Steam. Okay. Okay, okay. Alright. Um, I think that's mostly it. Anything I forgot about this? Unfancy f Tactics is 5 characters max on your side. Mm. That's actually information I didn't know. To be fair, that does make it slightly more likely that I will... Okay, or eventually play it. Not currently, though. We're done with Penance? We're done with Penance. Yes. We haven't defeated Penance, but we're done with Penance for now. Hi, Elis. Have you ever played Divinity, Original Sin, 1 or 2? Yes. And I really, really, really like both of them, especially Divinity, Original Sin 2 is amazing. But it's been my casual game, just been playing it... Well... Quite a bit. Maybe once the next casual playthrough is through, I might play it on stream, but until then... 
Probably not. Yeah, Divinity Original Sin 2 is really great. Tactics Ogre had those 10 versus 10 30 minute random fights. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you vote? Uh, nowhere yet, I still need to create the list and then put it onto the straw poll. But the link to the straw poll will be posted in Discord so you can vote for what you would like to see there. Um, one more question Should I make the straw poll multi choice? Where you can choose whatever you want, like as many, or well, vote for as many games as you want, or should I make it single choice where you have to decide for one? You might like Wargroove. It's actually kind of a game that. Yeah, alright, I'm gonna put that on the list for now. It's actually a game I've been thinking about as well. You like multi-choice. One says one vote. Sunless skies. Oh! Oh no. <laughs> now you bring that one up. I have to put that on the list. Nobody's gonna vote for sunless skies though. Because it's too unknown. But it's so fascinating. Then again, it's one of these games where I feel like I should just play through it offline. Before I play it on stream. Just because I think that would be more interesting. But it's so much time committed to it. Final Fantasy Tactics A2, Grimmar of the Rift, is a pretty good as far as tactics games go. Hmm. Slay the Spire and Monster Train are fun games. Yeah. I think I'm fine with Card Builder for now. I've been mostly playing just Retro Police for that. And yeah, that's an excellent point as well, Royal Blue. Sunless Skies right, right now for the voice wouldn't be a great time anyways. And if I want to use my voice, we still have Planescape Torment. Well, we're kind of in the middle of it. I want to continue that sometime too. Monster Rancher 1 and 2. Are these basically the Battle Arena games? What's the Digimon game? Where it's basically like top down, kind of a bit like Pokemon. Where you explore the world. For PlayStation, it's kind of old. I remember my friend having that one briefly. Lo uh, rented from a another friend of his, and it was kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. Have I heard about the new Digimon MMO coming out? I have not heard of that, no. I'm actually not terribly interested in, like, just Digimon as a franchise. But I'm always curious about looking into stuff that comes out. Cyber Sleuth is really nice. Uh, Uh, was it that one? No, that, that wasn't the one I was thinking of, but fair. I'm actually gonna put Pokemon Gold. Primer only. On the list. Why not? It's called a Digimon Super Rumble. Digimon Super Rumble. Let's see. Oh, the MMO is. Okay. Well, might as well want to see that at some point. Grimer only or Grimers only? I'm not sure. We'll see. 
probably initially just one grime mush, and if I feel like, yeah, let's make it an army of grime mush. Actually, I don't even know whether you can catch or any catch any grimers in Pokemon Gold and Silver. Or Crystal for that matter. Alrighty, um Okay. So yeah. Sorry, I guess this is not the most exciting or interesting stream for Final Fantasy or in general right now. But I just didn't feel like trying penance again. It's not interesting. One of the interesting things I think, if I knew exactly what penance was and what I was getting into, I would have been able to mentally prepare for something like that. But since it was just, well, too bad. Didn't quite work out in my uh, for me in the end. Primer only, but with Iron Man rules? What's Iron Man rules? <laughs> Penance is seven ton berries in a trench coat. I think ton berries would be friendlier. We'll see. Um, I imagine Final Fantasy VII would be a decently highly voted game. Last Remnant will definitely be on the list for people to vote as well. We'll see. Alrighty, everybody. I think that's that for now. It's a challenge rules that where you have to toss your Pokemon if it ever faints. There's more stuff there, but the details escape you. Isn't that the Nuzlocke part? Alrighty, I think that's that for now. I may at some point return to Final Fantasy X Penance, but as I've mentioned before, at some point I realized I would rather just play through Final Fantasy X, like just the main story again. Because I think there's so much you can do with the characters, plus I really like the story. And Penance? I mean... I do occasionally enjoy a stupid challenge, but also occasionally I feel like I'm okay for now. <laughs> I might eventually do it. But yeah, everybody, thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for listening and for lurking. I hope you enjoyed your stay, I hope you enjoyed being around, and, well, hopefully until next time. Take care, and have a good night. <laughs>